Hello folks, welcome back to The Quarantine Zone. I am Ant Law and I'm very, very pleased to have Ms. Rosie Freighter-Taylor joining me. Rosie, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. I'm being harassed by my cat. What's your cat's but, name? Um, his name is Augustus. Wow. But, um, yeah, he was crying at the door to come in, so it's me and the cat. Show us, show us. <laughs> he's really he's a black cat and I'm wearing black trousers. <laughs> Cool. Well, he didn't Augustus, like that <laughs> that's a pretty intense name for a cat. Yeah, we call him Oggy. But... Okay, that's yeah. a bit more cat. It's just a bit more like dog, a dog <laughs> kind of name to me. I don't know what's Augustus. A cat? Yeah, well, and Oggy as well. It's quite like, like a cat would be like, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, folks, we're really excited. Um, we have got a brand new music video for you, one of our favorite Joni Mitchell tunes, which we're going to share. And um, yeah, lots of interesting stuff, exciting stuff to talk about. Rosie's been releasing some amazing music and um, and is actually midway through a tour right now. I'm so glad you are free tonight, Rosie, to do this. So thank you for carving out the yes. time. Um, and we got plenty of time to talk about all the cool stuff. Uh, but first, how was your london jazz fest did you see anything or did you have any gigs that fell into the festival bracket or how was it it was uh the most shows i've ever done in one week in london it was it was mad actually because i played a few support slots um great so i basically went on tour of my own postcode which is hilarious in my own city i don't know who does that but um, I did Mark Lettieri for two nights at the Jazz Cafe. Awesome. He's guitar, guitarhero.com. And um, I also did, I'm um, fortunate enough to do the Union Chapel Great. for two nights as well. Amazing. Uh, supporting, she's a country singer called um, Frazy Ford from Canada. Sweet. Yeah, so I did that. And then I played a show in, there's a new venue in Woolwich called Woolwich Works. It's a really cool place. Um, and there was like a, female-led night and so i played one of those there are a couple of nights that they did that and Great. yeah so that was my london jazz festival and then i slept at the weekend because i needed sleep yeah that's it i was talking to um alex hitchcock earlier and he said he just like slept for a couple of days um i think i think <laughs> he got, like, there's a cold going around as well as well as you know yeah. that which shall not be named um i love support slots though because you, there's kind of no pressure in a way like usually it's a sold out venue for someone else you've got none of the stress of like mailing lists or making sure the dates are are plugged in the right places you just relax and enjoy the music right and play to a large audience oh my god i've frozen don't worry, don't worry. we can <laughs> hear you if you freeze again don't worry like we can okay, cool. if i freeze you. again hopefully it's not a really weird facial expression but um yeah, no, I agree. I love support slots. Uh, it has to be the right billing, though. I have done a few where it doesn't really yeah. make sense. But that's what I felt this week was that it made a lot of sense, um, especially supporting another guitarist. Because, um, yeah, I was like chatting to a bunch of people after and I was like, are you a guitarist? And they're like, yeah. Are you a guitarist? Yeah. So I feel like everyone wow. probably... That's good that you um, you chatted to them afterwards because I mean I, I don't know about you but I get quite intimidated when all the when I look out like and I'm like oh god all the guitar players are there I'm like oh no you know if I play like yeah. a thing they're gonna go like oh that was that thing and then like you can't play the thing again you know if you've got some like licks and stuff I become very conscious of that kind of <laughs> that meta narrative I don't oh know. yeah when people start like recognizing the licks that's uh that's pretty intense but yeah i mean it was it was uh it was quite funny because mark he lost his capo and uh no one in the audience had did you have capo. to go and like hold no the... well I, I sort of joked about that i don't know if he got my joke but um but yeah like bearing in mind that everyone's a guitarist not a single person in the room had a capo which is quite funny yeah, but, maybe like a plectrum or whatever, it would have worked. But I don't know, Capo is kind of more like yeah. folk. If you're playing music that changes key all the time, I'm kind of surprised that he he was using one, actually. I wonder what it was for. I know, you know it I mean? is surprising. Yeah, well, we'll never know because he didn't even play the tune. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell me a little bit more about your tour. Let me show the good people of YouTube, Facebook, 
Twitter, and maybe some, I can't remember of all the platforms, but is this the tour that you're currently, yeah. Yeah, this is the tour, but this is before the, the other support slots got added. But yeah, this was the, yeah. all of my headline dates Awesome on there. Okay, one second, Augustus wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Me. Okay, right, here we go. So, <laughs> okay. where, where's Stone Market? Whereabouts is that? Uh, it's like Suffolk cool. area. So, how's it um, been? Have you fired your entire band yet? What's, what's the best thing about the tour? What's the worst thing about the tour? Have you enjoyed it? Because touring's tiring, right? Like, how have you, I, have you found it? I have loved it, really. I mean, the, I mean, for a little while, I don't know, I was sort of questioning how much I enjoyed, like, putting on shows because it can be especially when it's like one big date I was doing a lot of dates where there were like people coming who I'm who I'm like I was scared to be there like industry people and mm. I was doing one-off dates and I was like oh god there's so much pressure to mm. like you say and sell the tickets and you know make it work make it you know because I have very very high standards for myself as well um yeah and but when I when I went on tour, like, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this, but um, it's sort of it's just you know it's just another show. Like you play a, a run of shows, and every night, you know, every night is important, but it just becomes like one show. Oh yeah, we did that show, and then we did that show, and that show. It takes the pressure off a little bit, and then you'll start you start feeling, you know, at your best. I find that quite a lot. So like the more shows I was doing, the sort of better I felt. Mm. So I think it's really helped me improve like my live playing because it's a completely different uh yeah. game live like transferring you know everything you practice to a live setting is is hard and it's a different thing so you know playing a concentrated amount of shows helped me sort of speed up that process i think so it's been really fun and i sort awesome. of feel myself getting better and better each show which is nice you know it's better than the alternative <laughs> yeah it's so great i'm i'm so impressed that you put it all together and that you did it and i mean the i completely agree we we learn so much from doing it and it sometimes it's a shame not everyone is able to to do it you know not everyone has the opportunity or or creates the opportunity or whatever um so respect for putting yourself out there and also yeah. let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about that um putting yourself out there this is the album bloom <laughs> there it is um and uh, yeah, so I really like it. I listened to it all today um, again. And then I actually found your older album, which I wasn't really oh, aware of. So you've, yeah, you've, been, yeah. you've been busy. You've been putting stuff out there. I, I have been. Yeah, I've been doing this for quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really old. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. I mean, I've, I've sort of always, I haven't, I mean, have I always written songs? I mean, I had a little kiddie band when I was younger, which I would write songs for. It was sort of quite Avril Lavigne inspired. I had all of like the Claire's accessories, you know, my skull and crossbones headband. And um, I was a massive tomboy. So I, I wrote songs for that. Um, and then I sort of, I was a big fan of Ben Howard when I was younger. I don't know if you know that guy. No, no. He's a songwriter. Okay. Um, you should check him out. He's an insane guitarist. The wow. parts he comes up with for his songs are really cool so yeah. i sort of rinsed a lot of his music when i was growing up yeah uh, and then i got very into jazz jazz playing and you know being a jazz guitarist personality <laughs> which is um a whole other thing um and so i got very into that for a long time and then i sort of when i was 16 or so i i sort of came across a few people um becca stevens being one of them and Gretchen Parlato being another one. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who were really nicely combining the jazz thing and the songwriter thing. And so it's sort of a natural progression, I, I guess. And I was very obsessed with Becca Stevens for a long time. Um, I remember I you, you, you told me about her years ago <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I've heard that name a bit, but you know, sometimes when everyone's talking about someone, it actually makes me less inclined to check them out. But, but anyway, <laughs> after you were like, she's my favorite. I uh, I went and listened and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, exactly. this is hip, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, ha I have to say one thing that you have that many of those artists that you haven't um, 
that you named don't have, Rosie, is you're actually quite a compelling virtuosic instrumentalist. I'm sure they can do a bit, but, um, you know, yeah, you are. So, so, and that's actually what caught my ear. I think, I can't remember the first time we met exactly, but I heard you Mm. play and I was like, wow, she's killing. I remember the first time we met. I was like, brilliant. (laughs) Now there's another amazing guitar player in London. Great. Just what, just what we need, you know? I came to your house for a lesson when I was younger. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that because we're very much peers now. And when no, I, look I at... know, but obviously. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was, and you told me all about tuning your guitar in fourths, and I was very, it blew my mind a little bit. Um, <laughs> and and you, you, yeah, you gave yeah. me your book as well. Very oh, so, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. It really sounds kind of like uh, proselytizing, doesn't it? But um as you can hear, everyone, I play the same, you know, licks as people in standard tuning. A, a, a good melody or a good chord is a good chord, regardless of the of the tuning. Um, mm. But yeah, Bloom. So, yeah, so I heard you play and I was like, wow. And then you started to do the scat thing with it. So not to ruin mm. the surprise for anyone who's not familiar with your artistry. <laughs> surprise! Um, yeah, <laughs> well, I just did ruin it. So, yeah. Uh, but people can hear hear a bit of that later it's a really cool thing um why don't you tell me so of your huge influences we've got like becca stevens why don't you take me through them and including the um the person that wrote the first tune that we're going to share with people Mm, so becca stevens is really important becca stevens i mean it changes throughout every period of my life but she was definitely a big one when i like was making my first album like you said Mm. um when I was about, I started writing that when I was 16 or so. Um, and then I'd say like more recently, my influences are sort of similar vein, um, tend to be really amazing singer, songwriter, guitarists with <laughs> very nice voices um, very and very like dexterous on guitar. A big one at the minute is Madison Cunningham. Wow. Um, she's my, yeah, she's my absolute idol at the minute, so you should check her out. She's cool. less jazz, more folk Americana, mm. but um, I guess in a similar vein to that, uh, Joni Mitchell is obviously a huge influence, as she is for, for most, um, well, you know, it's hard to, it's one of those people where you're like, oh, you can't really not be influ- influenced by her, especially if you're writing songs, at least, you know, because so many people are influenced by her, it's like a mm-hmm. chain reaction, I guess, at this point, but yeah. We did, and we did a little cover of my favorite song of hers. I don't know if it's your favorite. I haven't listened to them all, so I will. You haven't then, listened to them all. No, I'm sorry, everyone. I really like. Yeah, I love them. Um, <laughs> I do like Little Green. I mean, probably everyone says that. That's like a sort of classic, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I love oh, that I one. Know. I don't know. I love Little Green, and also uh, Carrie. Um, that's a nice yeah. one. So you're a blue. You're a blue fan. Yeah, that that record in particular. Yeah. Um, Mm. Well, let's share with everyone, Joni Mitchell, help me, and yeah, I hope you like it, folks. This is Joni Mitchell's Help Me, me and Rosie. Oh, help me, I think I'm falling in love again. When I get that crazy feeling and I'm in trouble again. I'm in trouble, cause you're a rambler and a gambler and a sweet talking ladies man. All your love are loving. So dun 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 dun. Not like we love our freedom. Got me hoping for the future I'm worrying about the past I've seen some A hot, hot blaze has come down to A small connection Show your love Our loving So I'm doing But not like we love our freedom Talking didn't feel good. Dance with the lady with the hole in her stock. 
Are you gonna let me go there by myself? That's such a lonely thing to do. Both of us flatten around, flatten and flatten and hat and two. Oh, you love our loving. But not like we love our freedom. beautiful I oh. just, I, that's so funny my my guitar strings i just really need to clip them in that video <laughs> oh I, yeah when they're all spiky and you're worried you're gonna like spike yourself that's very funny and i just decided that that was a great subject for the frame of that video it's just my unclipped guitar strings so. <laughs> but yeah man that was so fun that was wicked. like you were saying i haven't, I haven't seen that in ages that clip yeah and and I folks yeah um we were you saying earlier, you think it was March that we did it, right? Yes, I cool. think it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, folks, plug in some headphones and scroll back and listen to it. And also check Rosie's Instagram and stuff like that tomorrow and check mine. It's going to be on YouTube because yeah, the, sound, yeah, the sound quality is really, really good. The video, honestly, as you could probably gather by like the lighting right now, <laughs> I'm not, I just don't care that much about video, like compared to how much I care about the music. So the sound of that, that track is, the sounds amazing. And my wife was going, yeah, why does it sound so good? You recorded it at home. And I was like, well, we recorded it really carefully and we mixed it like professionally. And I was like, well, I think Rosie actually got a really great recorded sound as well. Like with all the layered nylon stuff and the voice and even your electric sound. I remember asking you, how did you get such a great electric sound? You're like, I plug it into my amp and put a mic in front of it. And I was like, what mic? What amp? And it was just like normal stuff, but tone is in the fingers. I think, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's the same way I recorded the record, actually. It's just really? exactly, yeah, exactly that setup. Stick a mic in front of the amp um, and then like layer a lot of the parts, a lot of the acoustics, a lot of like the ukuleles, nylons um yeah my acoustic and my vocals as well i think uh i don't know it's not quite reached jacob collier level layering <laughs> but i definitely i love i i like the sound of my own voice layered and so i, <laughs> I get quite excited i'm like oh, more layers more layers yeah so yeah i guess it's just it's one of those things like when you're sort of limited in a way in your i'm no like expert at you know pro tools cubase you sort of find ways to make it work for yourself, I suppose. And I guess I've come up with a way that I like, that people seem to like, that people comment on quite a lot. Um, but yeah, just out of my amp, I'm not going to tell you what it is because then, you know, you might come up with Bloom too. You, you, you told me already, Henrix and Jazz Amp, everyone. Oh, I told you. <laughs> um, you know, oh, that's loud, right? People have been asking me my pedals set up at the minute because... I recently got into using a few pedals for my live setup and I don't know whether to tell them or not. I don't know. Am I supposed to tell you that stuff? Oh. Or do I keep that to myself? 
Yeah, I mean, everyone... <laughs> I know a few guitarists who are very weird about their pedals. Really? And they're like, oh, yeah, what are you using? They're like, no, I'm not going to tell that you. That is so, so lame. And it's like if you play something, <laughs> uh, or if they play something, you're like, oh, what was that? That sounded really nice. But you, you're not quick enough to get it by your people. Like, I'm not telling you, man. I'm those, not you. those people are losing, seriously. Um, All right. I mean, I will so, tell you then. Okay, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, tell, tell me, tell me. So, I've been getting into using... So, do you know JHS, the pedal brand? Yep. I think they make just the best pedals. And I've been getting into using the, they have a vibrato chorus pedal and just sticking on the vibrato, um, even quite subtly, especially live mm. re in a, or in a trio setting, which I've been doing a lot. It really yeah. thickens the sound. Yeah. Um, and people are like, what is that? It sounds so good. And I'm like, oh, well, now everyone on this stream knows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe of the guitar pedal people, probably some people would like be using that kind of thing anyway. I mean, like stereo spread is is really cool mm. in general. But the ir the ironic thing is that I I stole that pedal from Madison Cunningham, so sweet. Uh, it's all it's all theft here. Exactly, everything's being passed <laughs> down. We should all share. It's great. I, I got a really. What is it? The best form of flattery or something? I'm not sure. Something like I'm sure Sorry. someone will weigh in um, in the comments, but I got a new pedal recently. The um, what is it called? Hologram Electronics Microcosm, and it, I'm I'm kind of scared to plug it in, but check it out. It does a lot of big glitchy ambient sparkly right, weirdness. Right, right. Um, yeah, I haven't got it out of the box because I'm scared, but. Yeah, I mean, I remember I got a photo once and this was in like, this isn't, this wasn't like a really grand gig, but a punter was taking a photo of my pedal board. So I took a photo of him taking a photo of the pedal board. I'll see if I can find it. Um, so eventually people will do that. The word will get out, you know. Um, but yeah, back to that tune, Wicked. And you did, uh, some of the vocals are doubled. There's one tune on the tail end of the record, Bloom, um, that I think you've done that with the vocal. And is that, is the tune Wondering, there's no words in that, right? It's all just like, mm. yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's an instrumental tune. Um, with voice as an instrument. Yeah, so. I guess, I guess so. Um, yeah, what was the thinking behind that? I think, well, some sometimes before I write, lyrics to a song i will just sing a melody that i hear and you know with the intention to add words later but i think with that one it just sort of felt nice to leave it as it was um because it's quite a simple melody so so yeah yeah there's a lot of like i guess that's the whole point of that tune is like it was sort of oh i'm gonna layer off as much as i can <laughs> yeah but yeah a few people are drawn to that one and i i I sort of thought it was like the most esoteric on there, but um, surprisingly quite a lot of people like that tune. Well, maybe not surprisingly, surprisingly in my head, yeah. but then you know, our favorites are always different to everyone else's, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's quite weird. And the ones that you, I mean, I remember like uh, on an album I released in 2018, I, I, was, I was not gonna put that pure imagination thing on it, but, I put that on and then like loads of people really liked it and they got playlisted and that kind of thing. So I was like, wow, okay. Because I just sort of just did it re quite off the cuff, you know. But anyway, sometimes those things end up working out yeah. really well. Speaking of playlisting, you're, if anyone wants to check out Rosie's music, head over to Spotify, Apple Music, those kind of places and follow her there. Not bad streaming stats. You've got a ton of monthly followers, close to 50,000. Not too bad, not too bad. I know. Well, I mean, that's props to my manager, really. Like, So my manager, um, his name's Eric Carcenti. Uh, we met we met just over a year ago, just before we started releasing the album. And we, we self-released it together. Um, it was a mad campaign. <laughs> it was like something ridiculous, like five singles in eight months. And then the album wow. over lockdown. And this is our first big project together. Yeah. Um, so it was a big team effort. So he's obviously, you know, he's quite, he's a well-connected guy. He's, but he's, his thing is really uh, branding, I suppose. Hmm. He's, you know, that's his big, like, you know, branding is the final extension of your art, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we thought a lot about, about that and um, how to market the music, how to present the music. 
and uh, for a self release, you know, it was, um, you know, I'm really proud of what it's what amazing. We did. It's amazing the yeah um, what you achieved. With and that. it's yeah, I I really like it like that because, you know, I think I think that's probably where the music industry is going. Um, you know, it's heading towards self release, towards you know, building your own fan bases, maintaining your own mm -hmm. fan bases like Patreon, TikTok, all these all these things. Um, but yeah. So that's props to him, really. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't ring up Spotify and like, oh, Spotify, can you put my music on a playlist, please? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. yes, of course, Rosie. Absolutely. Which track would you like us to playlist today? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not that yeah. simple, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, well done with it anyway. And it's wicked. Everyone go and check it out. Um, what was I going to, what else I going to ask you about? Oh, yeah. So tell us about, by the way, how's everyone doing? Everyone in internet land? let us know and also if you've got any questions for rosie then please type them in and i'll see them on here and then i can ask rosie questions if you have any um i was going to ask you've got loads of exciting gigs coming up that you were telling me about before tell me tell me about some mm. kind of highlights in the near future yeah well in the near future so this run this sort of the bloom tour run has just will finish tomorrow. So tomorrow is the last day. I'll look at that conveniently. <laughs> the last day is is tomorrow um, for that run. But then next year we've got a few sort of exciting things that are happening. Um, so I'm going. I'm playing a show in New York, which is insane. Wicked. Like, who does where, that? where are you playing? Where are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing Rockwood Musical. Wow. Um, I think they have a bunch of stages. It's like stage two or something. And like uh, it's during the winter jazz fest, sort of. I don't know if it's part of it officially, but we're just you know we're going to say it is because you know it's like that's like the London jazz fest. So I'm like, is this part of the London jazz fest or is it just happening during the London jazz fest? I don't know. I mean, I play that all the places I usually play, you know. So I know it's very funny, but yeah. So and that's that's sort of insane. Um, and I've got a band together. Uh, in New York as well, so I'm going to be playing with a bunch of really cool musicians wow. from New York, um, and hopefully be having some sessions and stuff. So that's happening in January, and then I'm going to the du Duc de Lombard. Great, in, uh, on the Rue de Lombard in Paris. Yeah, uh, we're going to do a show there. A good friend of mine, Mayele Manzanza, is also yeah. playing a show following night and I'm going to play with him as well. So it's a little Parisian, Parisian getaway and Eric's French as well. So it would be nice and homely for him. Uh, oh, yeah, great. and then I'm doing, I'm doing X Jazz as well, X Jazz Festival in Berlin. Berlin. Yeah. So as you can tell, like, this is like one of the goals is to, is to play like an EU tour, play abroad, play in Europe. Um, because I mean, I've sort of got a taste for that now and I'm like, I want more, I want to play more shows. So yeah, and it's really, it's a lovely feeling knowing that we can fulfill some of those goals um, and it's already happening. It's sort of, you know, it's a very lovely feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, the music's great and, you know, you deserve continued success. So keep up the good work. I mean, we're very vulnerable, you know, where we put, put our, our music out there in the world. Like, you do have to be quite brave, right? Because not everyone's going to like it. Maybe people will be judgmental yeah. about it. I don't know. Like, it is quite a barrier to overcome, isn't it? To just go, this is the album. Here it is, everyone. Yeah. I think uh, it gets harder the more you release sometimes as well. Um, you know, you throw a lot of energy into a project, into an album, and then you're like, and that's all you focus on for a long time. Is that, you know, you're, you're not even writing a lot of the time, at least not me. Mm. Um, I can't really focus on two things at once. Um, and then I'm, I'm sort of like now, oh, I really want to write. I really want to write new music and I want to come up with new stuff. But I'm like, oh, but that track that did well on, yeah. on the album, I'm like, how how did I write that again? Like, I don't, did I, because I, you, you write stuff. It's like we were saying, and you don't know it's going to, you know, whether one track is going to hit differently to another you, and you you know your favorites are your favorites they're not the fans favorites mm, mm. um and so yeah it can it can be it can be a weird one and you know i i feel i'm very aware of artists who i look up to releasing projects that i don't like <laughs> after the the album that i love and so i'm sort of like you know you can get in your head about that stuff um so i'm trying not to do that 
but yeah, releasing music is is you know it's great. It's it's what we live to do, me and you. But it's yeah, there's a lot there's a lot surrounding it. But it's just you know, it's all it's all part of the same thing. I mean, I had that when we released the five singles, like one after the other, mm. and the response to each single was completely different. And uh, you know sometimes better sometimes worse mm. <laughs> well I, however you want to quantify that but but yeah so it's it's a weird one and you can't really listen to it objectively for a long time i don't want to listen to my album really uh mm. still but maybe maybe in a year or so i'll i'll listen i'll be like oh yeah that was uh, i quite like what i did there <laughs> have you started you feel about um, yes the, the the next one i was going to ask I, i'll tell you a sec but have you started writing the next one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have started wow. writing it. Um, I, I needed to start writing new music. But yeah, I, I mean, sort of what we were saying, I get very in my head about it. I, I was quite in my head for a while recently about, about writing. <laughs> but I think it's just, you know, it's it's different. It's like Adele. I love, I love Adele. I love Adele. <laughs> oh, I haven't listened to the um, new album. 30. I haven't listened to that. Okay, we don't love her like, that much then. Maybe no, it's... well, I love her as a person. I'm not, okay, a, I'm I not, see. Huge, not musically so I much. See, I Apart see. Apart from the early stuff, which yep. is, I, I like the early stuff, but um, imagine like just being Adele and <laughs> releasing an album like 21 with someone like you and rolling in the deep on and then yeah. having to like follow that. That's That's insane. And like the pressure she must be under. So I feel a bit like a mini Adele like on a way way smaller scale <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah it's really interesting and um when we when we put music out there i guess you know we think about like why we're doing it what are we trying to achieve you know what what does count as success i mean i think to actually manage to create and get something out there in the world i think that's already a big success but yeah. then there are all these other things like is it popular um do, does it make money? I mean, whatever. You could pick any criteria, you know, um, to satisfy. Yeah, it's, 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 very, it's very hard. Uh, I it do is, a, yeah. I was actually, because I just finished the Royal Academy, um, I had a few really nice final projects there. Mm. Uh, one of them being a project with Dave Akumu. Amazing. Um, who, because I'm a guitarist, I'm, I get a one-to-one -on, one -one lesson with him. Um, and he was, you know, he was talking a lot about about that because he's, I'd say he's one of the those cats that's like, he's he has not compromised his art. You know what I mean? He's not done anything that he has not wanted to do. Mm. He's not sold out. Um, and it's, it's interesting. He's sort of like, you know, not to go on a, like a, I mean, a cap a anti capitalist rant or anything but <laughs> uh, but he was saying because I'm not that I really think about any of that stuff, but he was saying you know it is to an, it is sort of capitalism that makes this you know that makes art into a commodity and places that you know the um, how much money does your art make um that quantifies the value and it's like if you really start if you really think about what that's saying, it's like that makes no sense whatsoever. Because it's all subjective. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's quite weird. Like for me, I sort of started my life um, when I kind of finished studying and stuff like that. One of the first things to do was make a living from music. So there's always been that kind of strand, that very much like yeah. subjecting to that. And I've managed to get to a place where I can balance like doing like plenty of creative things as well. But then it's like, how do I get it so that I'm just just generating like making a living from the creative stuff you know yeah. is is that is that possible if so how how will i achieve it would i miss some of the sort of musical work i'm doing if i yeah. never got to do it again i think i would you know um yeah stage. i mean dave was full of, he was full of wisdom to be honest but yeah. like one thing that he said because i made a little i have Tell a little me. note in my phone from the yeah. lesson um, and I, th I mean, people say it a lot, but it's just all about the quality of the journey, really, isn't it? Because we're so misled into thinking that that there is a destination to what we're doing. There's like a, you know, success is somewhere tangible in the in the mm -hmm. future when it's just that that's just not true. That's just like a figment of our imaginations. And it's just all about, 
you know the quality of the journey i suppose and 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 making sure you're like enjoying what you're doing um i although i guess there's sort of like there's steps on on the ladder um at the end of the day it's it's yeah remembering that you're you're yeah enjoying the process as much as anything else um because like i mean you hear it all the time you know people will say like john mayer i watched a few interviews with him he's like yeah i know so many people who who are so doing so well you know they're playing stadium tours but they're like they don't feel like they're successful or they've they've achieved success because they haven't ever defined success um mm. it's something i think about a lot especially because you know the album is uh has you know very thankfully like pulled in a lot of a, a big jazz audience um like a lot of a lot of jazz lovers and music lovers like my music which is you know it's very flattering but i also sort of see it in a you know in a in a popular way i i hope that i can make music that's popular and that appeals to pop and different audiences and folk audiences and stuff um so you've got to sort of i guess think about those things and and what success means i don't know <laughs> yeah well i think yeah. Rosie, I'm ranting now you no, but that's really interesting. You you oh, sound wow, blurry. Don't don't worry. We can hear you clearly. But um, you sound very very reflective and kind of wise beyond your years, honestly. And I think it's it's really important. We uh, success is, for any individual is we define on our own terms, basically. Um, and I think it's really good to try and just let the let the art and let the music, the, like dictate the terms. You know, are we setting out what we want to achieve musically? And um, mm. it's really interesting that you say that, that you, you're interested in pulling in an audience from, well, non-jazz audience, the, the, the very large sector of musical listeners yeah. who, who don't listen to, to just jazz or anything, as well as the jazz audience. And that's always been something that I've thought about, actually. You wouldn't necessarily think it from maybe some of the, the musical projects that I'm doing, but um, I was always an outlier in my group of friends listening to to jazz they're always like why are you listening to that that rubbish you know and i was going oh but check this out and trying to trying to help them get into it um so i still i think that's kind of carried through to a bit so i always try to you know have nice strong melodic things going on so for example in that help me in that bit there's one bit where we're trading i think it's like two bars of four four and a bar of seven or something or maybe three fours and a seven but you wouldn't know because your phrasing is so melodic and good over it. And I mean, I'm trying to make mine good as well, you know, so people don't really notice that it's actually a pretty unusual metric thing going on. There's a, there's my little rant yeah. for you. <laughs> I think that's, that's something that a lot of people actually, like it, when I was playing this Mark Lettieri show, mm. everyone, they were all coming up to me, they were like, so what, so what do you do when you like sing your solo? Like, do you think about the intervals and the and what you're and the scale and what mm, you're playing mm. and the line? And I'm just yeah. like, I don't nah. really know. I sort of just do it. I don't. I don't know how I do it. Like, I just <laughs> and that's sort of my that sort of seems to be a theme with a lot of the music that I make. Like, you don't want it. And Bill Withers says this as well. He's like, you don't want to look up. You know the princess's skirt <laughs> so to speak you don't sometimes there's like things you don't need to know like you mm. so when if something works like you don't want to think too hard about it like especially songwriting uh, <laughs> or like and like singing my solos I don't want to start thinking too hard about it because then it I think it takes a bit of the magic away um from it so yeah. it's, it's sort of a bit of a theme I guess in my like I don't really think about bar lines i mean i barely think about chords to be honest um mm. but yeah i guess i'm just sort of i've just been fortunate to have been a player and a musician and playing in musical situations for so long that it's you know the guitar is just always part of me <laughs> it doesn't it's not it's not uh yeah it doesn't feel like i have to work too hard anymore which is nice um my fingers did start hurting though after this week of shows <laughs> what what you mean it like like uh yeah, muscular my, my or right just hand. sore sore on the... my right hand because it's all trio yeah. that we've been doing okay so i've got to like i've got to play quite a lot yeah to fill the spaces and i'm soloing a lot um and i'm comping a lot 
Like, yeah, my fingers died. Hey, and I've never. Comping's that's really never cool. happened to me before. Comping's really cool. Everyone, listen to the album. You're going to hear loads of really cool, nifty, like kind of arpeggio y <laughs> sort of cool things going on. That's Ben Howard. That's all Is Ben it really? Howard. Yeah. It's cool. I learned all of his music and it's just there in my, in my right hand forever. <laughs> Madison Cunningham, Ben Howard. We've already done Becca Stevens. Obviously, mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell. Cool. But those first two, I'm going to try and remember. Um, anything particular, Rosie, that you want to plug? Actually, I have something I need to plug. Talking, on, of, talking of music, that is really complicated. I'm going to be at the Vortex with HLK dusting off my eight string. It's our first London date in ages. Everyone come down to the Vortex Saturday, the 11th of December. I'm really I'm excited. That in my calendar right oh, now. Come, and, uh, <laughs> come and say yo, mate. If you, uh, if you fancy it, we've got loads of new music and anyone that knows HLK knows that new music is a big deal. 10 page charts that take a long, long time to learn. So we're very excited about that. Mm. But more importantly, go and listen to Bloom, Rosie's beautiful second record, and indeed her first record. What was it? What's the name of the first record again? First record is called On My Mind. On My Mind, wicked. I still play tunes from that live. Um, cool. Which is, that's actually, it's a funny thing, really, because uh, you can, I like how you can bring the music with you as you progress as a player. Yes. You can bring the older songs with you and mm. play them live. In a, I mean, it sounds completely different to the record now. Yeah. But it's quite a nice thing, I think. <laughs> Wicked. Uh, so, hey, let's let's play out with the second video. I think we should go to Ronnie's, just so you know how uh, mm -hmm. how much Rosie's smashing it. Let's, let's. <laughs> uh, let's play this video. The track's called Crazy. And do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, when it was and stuff like that? Yeah. So the track is a is a cover, first of all. It's a cover of a Seal song. Uh, Seal's crazy. Uh, and this, yeah, so I was very, you know, fortunate to play the Ronnie's live stream back in March, I think. So similar to when we filmed the video, actually. Mm. But... Um, yeah, and with, that was my first show with the full band for a long time. Um, and it was a really positive experience. I, the team were great. Like, the mix was great. Mm. Film, the video was awesome. Came out really well. Um, yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> awesome. Let, let's do it. Well, Rosie, I really appreciate you. Thanks so much for having a chat. It's been nice to actually quiz you a bit. I didn't didn't know like uh -huh. everything that you were, you were telling me about there. So I got some new artists to listen to. And thank you also so much for, for doing the track, you know. It's quite a lot to ask people like, hey, do you want to do a track? Like, can you just record it like really good quality and film it and send it to me, you know? So, yeah. Great well, there's a thank reason you. that we filmed that so long ago and it's because I'm really slow. <laughs> well, you know. It, but you're things. very welcome. It's been, it's been <laughs> lovely having a chat. It's nice, isn't it? Talking about music and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. And particularly with, with positive people, I don't know, like lots of people, um, I mean, maybe I, I'm at a sort of, I'm a little bit older than you and people, are, some people are dividing into maybe like jaded or, I don't know, or just getting yeah. a bit annoyed that they haven't achieved what they want to, I guess. Um, yeah, if, if, I've had several people tell me not to, not to go into the music industry, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I often Not naming any names. Yeah. But. Well, I always say one of the best bits of advice I was given was someone saying, you know, don't do it. And mm. I think it's the best bit of advice because you have to basically be crazy enough that you're going to do it anyway. You have to be able to listen to someone saying that and know that they're right, but say, you know, but not have a choice in your in your heart and soul, you know. Yeah. So you know you're going to do it. Um, yeah. All right. This is Crazy Ronnie's Rosie Freighter Taylor taking the world over, taking over the world. Check her out, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, whatever the hell the other ones are. See you all soon. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Bye. Bye. Cheers, Rosie.
things through my head. One of them's got a gun to shoot the other one. Get together, they were friends at school. Thank you so much.